Tell your friend that I'm a really nice guy and that it's her loss. I'm going to be rich and successful and powerful. And I'm better than any other guy she'll ever date or hook up with. <laughs> You're not that guy, pal. Trust me. You're not that guy. Hello, friends. Trace Amounts of Science. Today, we got some text-based nice guy stories. They are the top posts of all time. So, you know, they're probably going to be pretty good. Maybe. I hope. <laughs> Let's get into it and uh, see what we got. Nice guy locks me in his taxi cab by Smirky Bookie. Well, already this isn't sounding like a good thing. When did taxi cabs become more unsafe than an Uber? <laughs> For context, I live on a small island in the Caribbean, and I travel to the city for things that the island doesn't supply. Medication, school equipment, etc. I finished up my shopping. I didn't really have any big bags, only my backpack where I kept most of the things that I bought. And I hailed a cab. I asked to be driven to the ferry terminal so I could catch the boat ride home, and he complied. Cue the awkward conversation. Nice guy. Do you live around here? <laughs> I'd appreciate it if you don't talk. Just drive, please. <laughs> but Ophi says, no, I live on the island, so I'm trying to catch the next boat. Nice guy. Oh, so you're an islander, babe. Ugh. I kind of awkwardly chuckled, hoping the conversation would just end there. He ranted about how city girls are loud and obnoxious and... I just sort of cringed along the way. <laughs> I don't know if it's the best thing to ask him to stop talking. Maybe grinning and bearing it is the play to make, but I don't know. He seems to be taking it as encouragement. He asked me personal questions like what my name was, and I gave him my nickname. He asked if I had a partner at the time, no, and if I was looking to date anyone. Again, not really, as I was a student and 16 years old. I just rolled along with the conversation. You're essentially a, a hostage is what's happening right now. I would bring this whole thing to a dead stop, but I'm not a 16 year old girl. This is why you should always carry around the pepper spray, little taser, you know? Woman, you're way too close, baby! <laughs> is it illegal? Doesn't matter, just do it. It's for your own safety. He continued to brag about how he would never let his girlfriend go to the dangerous city alone like I was. He bragged about how good of a man he'd be to his girlfriend. Yeah, subtle. <laughs> I gave him the benefit of the doubt that he was just trying to spark a conversation, and then this happened. Benefit of the doubt's out the window a long time ago. At this point, we're, we're looking for survival. This is not going in a good direction. We slowed down a little before reaching the entrance to the terminal. He turned to look at me and asked for my Facebook and phone number. I told him I don't give those things out, and I asked how much I owed him for the ride. I went to open the door, and that's when he locked me in the cab. Keep in mind, I was a minor and in the main city, so I was scared shitless. The conversation went something like this. Nice guy. Don't be like that, babe. Maybe we can meet up again when you come out here. Uh, I'd, I'd treat you real good, and it'll be $8. OP said, I, I guess? Maybe? I really didn't want to say anything that would upset him, as I was currently locked in his vehicle. Kick the fucking window out and get his, whatever, identification number. Report him to his superior. But I guess I can kind of also understand being frozen with fear. I quickly gave him the amount he asked for. And I tried to pull up the lock thing on the side of the door, only for it to be locked again. Nice guy. Don't want you leaving too quick, love. <laughs> so what's your name on Facebook? And your number? He pulled out his phone, and I quickly said I didn't have a Facebook account, because my mom didn't let me. I do, but I didn't really want to tell him all that. He gave me his phone, and I placed a random phone number into his contacts. Before he had the chance to check if it was mine, like calling me for example, I pulled up the car lock and ran into the terminal. <laughs> I was in such a rush I left my water bottle in the taxi. TLDR, nice guy locked me in his taxi car because I didn't give him my phone number and Facebook account. Also, this is my first Reddit post, and not a bad Reddit post it is. What a horrifying situation. I think the water bottle is a small price to pay. Whoever that random phone number belongs to probably got some very angry messages. But there was some uh, good, quick thinking displayed here. You didn't make him angry, rock the boat, all this and that. You just looked for your moment of escape and you grasped it. And that's important. 
The world is a terrifying place, in summation. Keep your head on a swivel. And also report that guy, what the hell? Maybe we'll get a bit of justice in our next story, which is titled, Biker Dad, School's Nice Guy. <laughs> I like where this is going. He's all cranked up on crystal, beats him to death with a Red X Industries brand lead pipe. <laughs> Delicious. Delicious. <laughs> Not sure if this belongs here, but buckle up Reddit and or r slash viewers. That's a really weird way to spell Red X, but you're good. <laughs> you're in for a fun time with this one. So, there's me, 23 female, and my married co-worker, 29 male. I'd been at my job for a few weeks when we got a new assistant manager. Admittedly, he's cute, and we got along great. And I do have to admit, I was contemplating flirting and asking him out until I found out that he was married and had two kids. Fair enough. He was a pretty cool guy in a tiny town, so yeah, of course he was taken. No problem. We could just be work friends, right? I prefer work acquaintances, but yeah, I, I think that's okay. <laughs> uh, he says, apparently not. <laughs> A couple weeks into working with him, he starts telling me stuff about his personal life, claiming that he was in an abusive relationship. Okay, weird to bring that up to me, but yeah, okay. <laughs> Next time I saw him, I brought a few tools to help him get out. I thought that would be the end of it, right? Well, apparently not. No, no, you've only started to be sucked into his delusion. We can go down this rabbit hole so much deeper. Join me, won't you? <laughs> Over the next several weeks, he keeps coming to me as a confidant, even though I made it clear I wasn't comfortable with that. He even tried to reach out to me through social media, even though I told him not to, so I blocked him. Yeah, you're holding a, a nice firm boundary here, but he just doesn't seem to be getting it. No more tools, no more help, it's time for just cold shoulder. And if that fails, uh, a little meeting with HR. But eventually, this entire situation reared its ugly head when he decided to ask me out. He had not left his wife, and even if he did, well, he needs to heal from the supposed maltreatment first, so I told him no, and he kept trying to apologize for making me uncomfortable, so I told him to just drop it. <laughs> oh my god. Like, I guess you thought he was cute on the first meeting and stuff, but he's not as cool as you think he is. He's neurotic as shit. When we hire somebody, we're not we're not hiring our best. We're hiring schizophrenics and maltreaters, and some of them, I assume, are good people. <laughs> but some of them have lots of problems. <laughs> oh. So drop it he did, for at least a little bit. He continued to complain about his home life. Oh well. I got a new job anyway, so I'd be leaving in just a couple of weeks. Yet, however, he thought me leaving was about him and told me that he would leave if I wanted to stay. I told him it wasn't about him and again, to just drop it. <laughs> I mean, it was partially about him, but you don't admit that. Maybe it really is just the pay. Maybe leaving him behind is just a, a handy bonus. <laughs> he continued on with his usual thing. Oh well, I just half listened to him at this point. And then, his last ditch attempt before I left happened. Oh, he's gonna stand outside your window with an 80s boombox and a bouquet of roses. I seen it before. <laughs> the last night I was working there, he told me he was divorcing his wife. Okay, I shrug it off. It's not like I was going to date him if he left her anyways. The night went along okay, and she came by with his dinner in the middle of our shift. Weird, but alright, whatever. I would have brought up the divorce thing with her. Tiny little horns would have sprouted out of my head, and I would have said, let's, let's see how true this thing is. Oh, it looks like a lovely lasagna. You're still making him lasagna, despite the fact that he plans to divorce you shortly? <laughs> <laughs> she was in and out, though. As soon as she was out the door, he came running to me and let out his biggest lie yet. He claimed that his wife told him that she wanted me dead. <laughs> of course, that scared the crap out of me. The wife probably doesn't even know who you are. He's hatching some, like, deranged scheme or something in his own brain. 
Now, throughout this whole thing, I've been keeping my parents informed because they are who I relied on to know what to do during this whole thing. They were definitely my guiding light, and as soon as these lies poured out that day, I relayed it via text to my folks. Dude, I love parents that are on point. Some might see it as meddling. I see it as keeping your kids safe. Especially if they feel comfortable enough to, like, open up to you about these things. They're probably not going to do it between, like, you know, 15 to 19. But by the time they hit 23, yeah, you learn parents can actually be your friends sometimes, too. Anyway, that night, my dad came to get me after we did the closing duties. Of course, my dad comes roaring in on his motorcycle and waits for us to be done. Based biker dad. Love it. <laughs> At this point, my coworker was already scared. So scared that he skipped paperwork in order to hurry up and leave. He knew what was coming. <laughs> when we finally came outside to lock the doors behind us, my dad, in full biker leathers, came around to my co-worker's wife's car, and the wife followed my dad around. Co-worker tried to avoid making eye contact with my dad. He was shrinking in fear. Fragile little mouse. <laughs> my dad had a man-to-man -man talk with the guy. He didn't want to hurt him, just, you know, scared the crap out of him. He might have even wet his pants a little bit. <laughs> Meanwhile, the wife was apologizing to me about her husband's behavior. She genuinely felt bad about her husband. It was a huge relief to know that she didn't blame me, although I do feel bad for her. And well, you should. That is not a situation that uh, probably she wants to be in. But you got a couple kids, you feel caged in. Sometimes, however, divorce is worth the trouble. I don't advocate it often, but with this guy, like, trying to step out and everything, yeah. I think it's safe to say this one's dead as a doornail. Time to move on. Anyway, after my dad and I were done talking to the two, the wife started screaming at her husband and told him to walk home. <laughs> dad and I hopped onto the motorcycle and rode home, with the two of them still screaming at each other. Something tells me that, uh, that's not an uncommon occurrence in their relationship. They got a lot of things to work through, but I'm glad it ain't your problem no more, OP. Like, Dad, come get me, make sure I get home safe, and it was done. I'm surprised he didn't ask, like, where you were working next, and blah blah blah. Because it could have gone on for a long time, but, uh, yeah, Biker Dad does know how to handle business, it seems like. So good for him, good for you. I hope that co-worker's wife leaves him quick, fast, in a hurry. Uh, let's move into our next story. According to this guy, not smiling at a guy makes you look like you think that he's a monster who will commit crimes of a sexual nature. What an insane way to even think. I think I know what you're thinking about me. <laughs> How about people just have their own shit going on? Probably nobody even noticed you, okay? Uh, so about two months ago, I was walking down the street, listening to my music loud with my headphones on a pretty nice day. At this point, I was by this supermarket and its parking lot full of people either getting in or getting out. I felt like someone was behind me, so I looked back. A man in his 40s was there, which didn't make me feel threatened as there was so much space between us and so many people around. I continued my walk with no interference until five seconds later, the man ran to catch up with me and stood in front of me. He started aggressively shouting at me and I removed my headphones. Oh, a man aggressively shouting. I'd better see what this is about. <laughs> Flip of the bird and walk away. I give a shit what you got to say. Carry on. <laughs> His speech went something like, I smiled at you. Why didn't you smile back? Are you a bitch? This is why nice guys are single. Because females believe that all men are grapers. Obviously, he called me a whore at some point. Also, I'm 21. Yeah, half his age. But I'm sure he was just being a nice guy, screaming at you in a parking lot. What, <laughs> what is this? Uh, what the fuck's your problem? I looked at the parking lot and a big chunk of people in there had stopped what they were doing to watch. Oh yeah, don't intervene or anything, just keep fucking watching. Pull out your phone, why not? Go live on TikTok while I'm berated by a complete stranger, that's so helpful. <laughs> One couple standing in the corner in particular seemed worried, and the man in it left his girlfriend and started walking towards us. There he is! Giga Chad's coming! Don't worry! He looked like he could throw some punches if he had to. Well, the nice guy saw him, sighed, 
and walked off. <laughs> I thanked the man who came to check if I was okay. His girlfriend followed, and I was. I kept on walking down the street afterwards. But again, I'm glad it didn't escalate. You don't have to smile. I probably didn't even notice you smiling at me. And if you were smiling, it's not because you're a nice person. It's because you have ulterior motives. And everybody knows that. What a psychopath. <laughs> Just an absolute maniac. Loading up his groceries and then having a freak out when some random chick doesn't smile back at him. Just a complete lack of self-awareness. I wish he would have got punched a couple times, you know? <laughs> Probably would have jiggled something around and, and set his wires straight. Oh well, there's always next time, and there will be a next time. Although I'm glad it wasn't a next time with you, because, yeah, he could have kept following you or done some weird stuff, but nope. Tail between his legs, he ran on home, probably to his wife and kids, who don't know that he's out harassing women half his age while he goes and picks up milk or whatever. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, what a mess! But still, we keep it moving! This story is called, Doesn't Say a Single Word to Me, Expects Me to Go Home With Him. <laughs> What is wrong with you people? Is this name Elliot Roger? <laughs> <Can I? laughs> so definitely not the most extreme story here. And it happened a few months ago, but every time I think about it, I'm just floored at the audacity of some dudes. As an adult in college does, I go to bars with my friends. One night I met a friend of mine out and one of her guy friends who I had never met. When I get there, she introduces me to the guy, and I see behind him is another guy, just kind of watching. Neither of them introduced me to this guy, and he didn't introduce himself, so I assumed he wasn't with them. For the sake of the story, I'll call him Watcher. <laughs> it's so creepy, dude. Why, why you gotta be the third wheel, fourth wheel, whatever it is? There's too many wheels with you here! But okay, let's watch the Watcher do some creepy things. The bar we were in had two floors, with the upstairs being for dancing. As I'm following my friend up the stairs, I noticed that Watcher had begun to follow us. I asked my friend, and apparently Watcher was friends, or at least familiar, with the other guy, so I shrugged it off and went to dance. I mean, what else can you do, I guess? Tell the guy your friend's gotta leave because he's creeping me out? I mean, you could do that. <laughs> The whole time I'm dancing, Watcher is standing slightly behind me and off to the side. Enough to where he could look at my butt, but pretend like he's not when I turn around to look at him. He didn't try to touch me or approach me in any way beside that. He didn't even try to speak to me, so I just kept doing my thing. <laughs> at some point, my friend and I go downstairs to get some more drinks, and she informs me that Watcher told the other guy to tell my friend to tell me that I was cute. What is this, like, fifth grade? Grow a dick. Tell me yourself. <laughs> uh, OP says exactly that. I tell her that if he wants to talk to me, he should do it himself. I know it sounds mean, but we're all adults. We're not in middle school. Now I'm 100% with you. Bang on point. Not even mean. Just truthful. Here's a reality check, you little creep. <laughs> After a little while longer upstairs, the other guy says he has to go, but Watcher doesn't follow. He continues to just hover behind me. Starting to feel uncomfortable at this point, my friend and I go down to the street to grab some of our other guy friends from a different bar and bring them back with us to the first bar, hoping that Watcher would leave because I was gone, and then we could have fun at the bar that we wanted to be in without being bothered. I mean, part of me says pack it in, just go home, but I'm kind of partial to that anyway. <laughs> I like that OP is not letting this weirdo ruin her night. It's a battle of attrition! Now, back in the first bar with my new group, I'm waiting for a drink and talking to my friend about my crush, and we're just having fun gossiping when suddenly she says, Hey, let's go upstairs, <laughs> and drags me and the boys with her upstairs. Apparently, she had seen Watcher eavesdropping behind me, and I didn't see him until we were upstairs dancing, and I caught him doing the same thing he did earlier after following us up. This is so weird. At some point, can we address it? Tell one of the dudes to make him leave. I'm sure they'd be happy to. He doesn't present much of a threat. <laughs> after a little while of him following us as we moved to different parts of the dance floor, just staring and not saying a word, we all moved back downstairs and decided that, uh, we should probably get going. <laughs> so I slipped into the bathroom before we left. 
When I came back, my whole group looks a little stunned, and I asked what I missed. Apparently, once I was out of earshot, Watcher blew up and started yelling at my friend and said, Tell your friend that I'm a really nice guy and that it's her loss. I'm going to be rich and successful and powerful. And I'm better than any other guy she'll ever date or hook up with. <laughs> You're not that guy, pal. Trust me. You're not that guy. Uh, like, you could have been cool, you know, had a drink, chilled out, started a conversation, but instead you just stood, stood there, silently, seething and boiling the entire night. And it all led up to this. Because of your own mental struggles. Watcher, you need to get yourself under control, son. Now you've just shown your whole ass to a bunch of people who might know you tangentially. And if that's the case, they probably don't want to know you anymore. <laughs> and then Watcher stormed out. My friends walked me to my bus stop and waited to make sure that I got on safely and that he wasn't, like, hanging around to catch me alone, and I haven't seen him since. Well, at least he had the brains to get the fuck out of Dodge, honestly. But yeah, I'm glad your friends were there to make sure you got on your bus and stuff, because again, this, this could have ended horribly. What a freak! TLDR, a guy follows me around a bar all night without making any attempts to speak to me. At all. Not a single word. He then pulls a nice guy 180 and yells at my friends to tell me how he's such a nice guy and better than anyone else I'll ever be with. I don't even know his name because he didn't even bother to speak a single word to me. <laughs> this is like some level of delusion, you know? He really had some big ideas in his head, but he, he couldn't manifest them into reality. I guess he's just trying to like, you know, focus his mental energy on OP through her ass. <laughs> He's like, come over and talk to me. Booty, tell the brain she needs to come over here and talk to me. <laughs> she never did. Nobody ever will. You're a sad, strange little man, and I'm glad you're gone forever. Although it's kind of scary to think about what he might do in the future, I guess. Ugh, can't hang on that too much. We just gotta move on to the next. Looks like this one's about nice gays. <laughs> A uh, nice guy wants me to change my gender, because real girls don't like him. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, well, uh, at least he is accepting himself. He's coming into his own. It's been a long, hard, very hard, <laughs> rocky road. <laughs> uh, OP says, you know that body type that always seems to attract nice guys? The small, short, cute-looking girls. Beard bait. Well, okay, imagine that, but a gay guy. That's our OP. Five foot two, generally twinkish nerd. I have a feminine look about me, and that attracts uh, a certain type of guy. Particularly guys who are questioning their sexuality. They feel more comfortable with someone like me, and I'm fine with that. I've been many a man's first homo experience. Weird flex, but okay. <laughs> So I wasn't surprised when the subject of our story, who I will just call Guy, started showing interest in me. Yeah, do whatever. It's just like same day, different dong, you know? <laughs> Every Saturday, I go hang out at a friend's house and play board games with his other friends, usually from his college. People drift in and out, but we have a pretty solid core. About a year ago, I had the pleasure of meeting Guy, who came to the meetup to play Magic the Gathering with some of the other guys. What color deck does he play? Because that can tell me a lot about a person. Ramtad likes red and green. I like blue and white. Of course I play blue. It's the most annoying thing in the world. Why wouldn't I play blue? <laughs> OP says, Magic the Gathering wasn't really my thing. I was more into sorcery, the conglomeration. <laughs> so I didn't pay attention. And I focused instead on the many three-hour strategic board games about agriculture that I was playing. Yeah, riveting. I know. <laughs> you like what you like, man. It's fine. After a bit, Guy drifts over to watch the last couple rounds of my game. We start talking. He helps me clean up the game when we're done. And I'm honestly having a nice time. He was cute, and when he asked to hang out one-on-one -on -one later that week, I was excited. Whenever I flirt with a guy who's obviously new to the whole gay business, I'm always very careful to make sure that I don't make them feel uncomfortable or pressured, but at the same time, let them know that I'm interested. I've sort of experienced this firsthand. Yeah, gay dudes are really good at the social game. 
So yeah, the encounter could have been entirely platonic, and that is kind of what it seemed like at first. I go to his house. We have a nice conversation. Then he asks if I want to watch a movie. I'm in. I'm wondering if this is a Netflix and chill situation. After a bit into the movie, he does that yawn and put an arm around the shoulder thing. <laughs> and it's so cheesy that I just laugh out loud. <laughs> I just thought of the greatest move ever. <laughs> that is really funny, though. He's like, I saw this in an 80s comedy. It's totally gonna work. <laughs> Stop. Uh, he looks embarrassed and starts to move his arm, but I tell him it's fine. I liked his arm there. And then we started the full-on cuddle, and yeah, it's pretty nice. After the movie ends, we stay cuddling and talk for a bit. And this is where things go downhill real fast. We're talking about the Clone Wars animated TV show, and he says, Yeah, I really enjoyed those episodes. Anyway, I heard you like being choked. <laughs> that is the smoothest trans- like butter. <laughs> One topic to the next. This conversation flows so naturally. <laughs> OP says, I am taken aback, so... I just answer honestly, yeah, how did you, do you want me to choke you? <laughs> it's a Lenny from a Mice and Men situation if I've ever seen it. You want to put your life into his hands? His monstrous ham hands? <laughs> uh, OP says, I mean, I like it, you know, during intimacy or foreplay or whatever. Oh. Then he goes back to talking about the Clone Wars. <laughs> and I'm still just processing what happened. I ask him where he heard that. And he said he heard someone make a joke or something that referenced me being into that kind of stuff. That's not unusual. Joking about intimate stuff isn't uncommon in the people I hang out with. Yeah, different strokes. It's your friend group. I joke about it online in the privacy of my own bedroom. Don't necessarily drag it out into public, unless it's for one of them shock laughs, but that's rarely worth it anyways. So, uh, OP then asks Guy if he brought it up because he wanted to try some stuff like that with OP. And Guy asked if I'd like to do stuff with him, and I said I find him attractive, and at this point, I'm just thinking, Oh, I'm totally gonna gobble this guy's goo, <laughs> when he says, uh, I'm a virgin, actually. Nani? <laughs> Gasp! I tell him that's fine and he can take it as slow as he wants and not to be embarrassed or worried about being bad. I'm cuddling with him thinking that this is a cute moment. Some might call it cute. I'm a bit uncomfortable that you're about to deflower the young lad. But it does seem all nice and respectful and consensual, so I have no objection. Carry on! LP continues, then Guy asks me straight up if I would theoretically give him a bit of a mouth action. I say yes, and ask if he would give one to me. Usually if the guy doesn't have experience with other guys, he might be nervous about that kind of stuff, but almost all the guys I've been with were willing and excited to give it a try. He makes a noise that doesn't sound positive, and says, God no. Why would I do that? <laughs> hey, he's not gay. This is just the glory hole without the glory or the hole part. <laughs> That's hilarious. In that moment, I decided I was definitely not going to even look at his junk. I get that I'm kind of femmy, but I want guys to be attracted to me as a guy, not some girl alternative like Diet Girl or Girl Light. <laughs> I ask him if he's attracted to men. He says, no, and I remind him that I'm a guy. He says, well, not really. <laughs> Zoinks. <laughs> I'm gay. Uh, yeah, this is going off the deep end real fast, isn't it? Let's ramp it up a little further, why not? He starts to talk about how he likes girls, but they won't even give him the time of day. <laughs> why do you think that is? 
He ranted about how mistreated he is by women and how it makes him so mad. He said that women didn't even deserve him, that he was so above them and they couldn't see the merits in a nice guy like him. <laughs> wow, dude. Just that morbidly fascinating combination of narcissism mixed with insecurity. He also said that he wanted to lose his V-card so bad he almost hired a courtesan. Then he looks at me and says, But you're almost as good as a real girl. <laughs> oh, dude. Uh, wow. Definitely outside my frame of reference, but still, I would feel offended as shit. <laughs> this date is over now. Never talk to me about Star Wars again. I was so shocked that I didn't know what to say for a bit. Then I ask him why he said real girl instead of just girl. What am I, a, a fake girl? He said that yeah, I'm pretty much a girl and that since I'm into nerdy stuff, unlike those other girls, <laughs> then he actually has a chance with me. <laughs> he literally just said, you're not like other girls to a guy. <laughs> Uh, he sabotaged this entire situation, burnt it to the ground, and the truth is he's probably not even going to understand why <laughs> this went so poorly. He then asks if I've ever worn wigs. I tentatively tell him, yeah, which I regret. <laughs> uh, he starts saying things like, how much you'd like to see me in a dress, how I'd look so pretty. We'd like to dress me up, etc. And I am super, super uncomfy. Well, you're not alone on that, OP. This is <laughs> a different side of life. I've never experimented with any of those things, nor have I felt inclined to. OP says, I've done cross-dressing, gender-bending stuff before, but the appeal was always, I'm a boy in a skirt, not, I'm a girl. I start to move away from him, since this whole time we were still cuddling, and he just kind of pulls me back. Okay, great. Fantastic. See, this is why he wants somebody smaller than himself. I might be a man-child, but I can control this situation physically! <laughs> it's a really weird thing. Screw all those other bitches. He says, I could, I could turn you into the best girl there is. We could get you some estrogen to take. Oh, God, dude. <laughs> it's really going off the rails, isn't it? Nope, 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 nope. I break away from his arms and stand up before he can finish that awful statement. I tell him firmly that I'm a guy. I like being a guy. I'll always be a guy. And if he wants a girl, then he's looking in the wrong place. His tone changes, and he starts to beg me to stay, saying that I could still be a guy, but I just look like a girl. Yeah, he, he really isn't getting it. I walk over and pick up my bag and leave his place. Yep, not even the faintest clue, just like I expected. Oh well, at least he got out of there safe once again. I don't hear from him, and when the next game day get-together thing happens, he doesn't show up at all. He was a friend of a friend of a friend, and the people there that day didn't really know him, so they couldn't tell me what he was up to. I tell them about our encounter, and they talk about how during the game of Magic they were playing that first day, he said a couple of sexist things that caught them off guard. I wish I had heard them before I hung out with him. Haven't heard from him since, and uh, yeah, don't want to. Yeah, that's definitely a blessing. The trash taking itself out, essentially. <laughs> You don't have to make it awkward, it's just, uh, we, we didn't communicate properly, I guess. You had one idea of what you wanted me to be, and that's not the thing that I am. Maybe you could meet somewhere in the middle, with a bit more communication, but yeah. If one side is just completely not hearing the other one, then it's probably best to back out, respectfully. At least you guys both know a bit more of what you want now, right? I wish Guy all the luck in the world with his new chaser lifestyle. <laughs> uh, how about this one? I finally understand by Senor Bino's wifey. <laughs> Muy bueno. So, I admittedly did not understand the whole nice guy hate. For the longest time, I've always thought of my husband as a nice guy. Always there for everyone. Would give you the shirt off his back and expect nothing in return. 
loves me to pieces, and it was a nice change after only dating bad guys in my past. However, after an experience I went through slash am going through, I understand what women mean now. Yeah, I mean, if you're in a secure relationship and most of your interaction with, is with your partner, then you probably have a more positive perception of the opposite gender at large. Because your partner is the, the representative <laughs> for that gender. Although OP does say she's dated some bad boys in the past, so I don't know. There's a TLDR here. I became friends with a nice guy at work, and when he realized I was not going to leave my husband for him or sleep with him, he completely destroyed my reputation at work. <laughs> God, uh, about a year or so, I met this guy at work. We'll call him N. I recently was just moved to his department, and he was showing me the ropes. We clicked pretty easy, and it wasn't long before I was considering him one of my best friends. He's ten years younger than me, and he knew I had two kids and was happily married because I talked about my husband all the time. Yeah, but that doesn't matter in his head fantasies, you see. Went from showing her the ropes at work... The show under the pearly ropes. You know what I mean? <laughs> we all know what's going on here. The kids don't know, but we do. Uh, uh, he would talk to me about past relationships, and I talked to him about my past relationships, and everything I learned from these experiences. I am admittedly a hopeless romantic. I believe that everyone has a soulmate, and I believe that I found mine. N said he believed in soulmates as well. <laughs> Uh-huh. He told me he was hoping to meet his, but he's just not having any luck. He actually talked to me about one girl that he claims completely broke his heart. Swears she led him on for a year. At the time, I felt bad for him. Looking back now, I wonder if this girl actually had led him on, or if he just couldn't take a no. I think we all know the answer. OP's gonna find out firsthand. <laughs> She actually used to work where I work before I came there, but left after it all went down because pretty much everyone hated her because of what she supposedly did to N. Boy, you see that train barreling down the tracks, don't you? After you've lived it, the, the pieces really all fall into place. <laughs> One of the things that stood out to me, though, was the only thing he could tell me about her was how fine or hot she was. I told him if he wanted to find a woman that he could spend his life with, he needed to be concerned with more than just appearance. I told him if he asked my husband what he loved about me, my appearance would be one of the last things that he mentioned. I don't know, physical attraction is pretty important. My wife says the same thing. Then again, I guess we're both really shallow. <laughs> maybe that's fine. Looking back now, maybe that should have been the first red flag, but I chalked it up to him being young. And he was actually a really good guy, and I'm sure as he gets older, he'll learn to mature and value women for more than just their appearance. Yeah, I'm sure he will, OP. <laughs> uh, we would have a lot of long talks after work about everything. Usually him venting to me about the dating scene and me giving him advice. I truly viewed him like a little brother. It never crossed my mind that he was thinking that we would ever be something more. I mean, you guys are talking about relationship stuff, which sort of crosses a line. Or maybe not cross it, but it's tiptoe in the line, you know? <laughs> You're opening up this line of dialogue and thought, and I know it gets slow at work, but let's find some other things to talk about, shall we? This is a professional work environment. I think a lot of people forget that. Anyway, he started buying me and my kids stuff randomly. <laughs> no thank you. Everyone around me at work kept saying, Oh, he's just a nice guy. That's just how he is, etc. So I chalked it up to that. Dude, no. Return all of that shit right now. <laughs> uh, my husband started expressing to me that my relationship with N was making him pretty uncomfortable and that he was certain that he wanted to be with me. Yep, men are programmed, pre-wired to figure things like that out. I told my husband that I didn't really think that was it, and it's just a really nice guy. <laughs> and that I wanted for them to meet because I thought they'd really get along. I told him how N was in his early 20s, and I'm certain he's not looking for a 32-year-old mom of two. I think he's looking for anything he can get right now. <laughs> Let me be honest. That's a thirsty fellow. Not trying to disparage OP. I I'm Literally, he would find a crack whore behind the love dumpster. 
Get a case of good old Red X brand Super AIDS. He's got AIDS. It's so good and so good for you. Over time, I noticed N getting more pushy, almost expecting time with me. I started cutting our after work conversation short because I really just wanted to get home to my husband and kids. It started to seem like the more I tried to cut them short, the more he pushed to extend it. <laughs> he would jokingly pout and say, He needed time with me too. Ew. Man baby looking for a mommy figure. It ain't gonna be me, stupid. Sort yourself out. <laughs> uh, again, I chalked it up to him being young and not understanding the responsibility of raising a family and just kept trying to set some boundaries. Yeah, how's that working for you? <laughs> uh, you can't keep making excuses for him, is what it is. Oh, he's just that. He's, he doesn't understand. Yes, he doesn't understand because he refuses to understand. What do you not understand? <laughs> Uh, one night, a lot of us from work got together, like we had in the past, but this time, my husband came along. I was so excited for my husband to meet my work friends because they had all become really important to me. I immediately noticed N's attitude towards me was different. <laughs> he didn't talk to me at all, and seemed to be avoiding me while my husband was around. What a wormy little fuck. <laughs> I'd like to see him get stomped into the dirt. N did eventually start talking to my husband, however. OP says I was already pretty drunk, though. N seemed to be taking an aggressive tone and asked my husband, So you actually work? I thought that was kind of shitty, but then I thought maybe my emotions were heightened because I was drunk and my husband didn't seem phased, so I let it go. At some point during the night, the babysitter started calling because our son was upset. Since I was pretty out of it, my husband stepped out to talk to her and our son. At this point, N started getting in my face quite a bit. He started asking me, oh, Where's what's-his-face at? Over and over again, very visibly irritated. We previously had conversations about how I always hated it when guys referred to a girl's significant other like that because it's very obvious what he's trying to do. And that's when it hit me that my husband was right. <laughs> uh, justice! The truth shall set you free! <laughs> uh, I'm glad you got it figured out eventually. I'm glad the husband didn't press on it too hard. He's like, whatever. If I was worried about another guy, it wouldn't be you. <laughs> uh, when we left, my husband told me about how he was wrong about Anne, and he was really just a nice guy. And he had a lot of fun and couldn't wait to hang out with my work friends again. I felt awful. Dude, no, correct him. Tell him that he was right. Explain the situation that made you see his mindset. When we returned to work, N found me and immediately started trying to trash talk my husband. Funny, the only thing he could come up with was to talk crap about a joke my husband told. I told him that I thought my husband was funnier than he was and walked off. <laughs> oh, the claws are starting to come out. I'm liking this. N completely lost it, of course. Yeah, off comes the mask. <laughs> he started sending me rants about how he's such a prize and he can make friends no matter where he goes and he's always the life of the party. <laughs> nobody cares. I know these are things you have to tell yourself to keep your ego intact, but nobody even likes you, really. You're not even that good at your job. You're overall just an inconvenience. Like, not just as an employee, but also as a human being. I see you as a roadblock to my own happiness, so I'm just gonna pretend you don't exist from now on. And I appreciate if you'd respect that. That's the line! Say it! Practice it! <laughs> OP says I did ignore him indeed. Yeah, great move. He eventually followed me out to my car after work one day. And he told me how I was his soulmate, and he's never met anyone like me, and I should be with him. <laughs> uh, this is so pathetic. What the fuck are you doing? It's like the only woman who ever paid attention to him, and now he's just clung on. <laughs> uh, I told him I didn't feel the same way he did, and I was very happily married. And he knew that. I never even hinted that I was looking to leave my marriage. He saw what he wanted to see. Absolutely. It's very weird how brains work and twist these things around. 
She touched my arm that one time. It totally means she wants me. And he obsessed about it for months and months. And now here we are. He then went off about how he was such a nice guy and did so much for me. And that I should realize how much he cares for me because he not only bought presents for me, but also for my kids. Well, yeah, get the kids involved too. That's great. <laughs> And that he's so tired of women choosing bad guys over good guys like him. Yeah, that's why it's so fucking confusing out here. Because the bad guys are actually good and the good guys are actually bad. It's just opposite day every day in nice guy land. <laughs> he said that he deserved to be not my husband. And that statement pissed me off. I told him that he doesn't even know a thing about my husband. Yes. Yes, dude. Wife rage. <laughs> the good kind, though, <laughs> this time. <laughs> uh, I love when wifey comes to my defense on my behalf. Claws out. Bite his nose off right now. <laughs> I said, my husband's an incredible man and treats me like a queen. I told N that my husband was a lot nicer than him because he'll do nice things for people all the time and then gasp. Not expect anything back! <laughs> uh, I told N that if he actually cared about me, then he wouldn't be actively trying to break up my family. I told him I couldn't believe that he thought he was entitled to me ending my marriage just because he treated me with some human decency. Fucking unbelievable. <laughs> I couldn't have said that any better, honestly. Sounds like Hubby needs to come down and put the boots to this wormy little fuck. Wait outside by his car and just be like, yeah, where are you headed? Uh, I'm going home. No, you're not. You're going to the hospital. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, call an ambulance! Call an ambulance! But not for me! <laughs> yeah, that's totally cool. That would have been a totally cool thing if I actually said and did that. Everybody would have clapped. <laughs> uh, I completely ended our friendship right there. I only talk to him when I absolutely have to for work. He posted a poor me status on Facebook about how I made him believe I wanted him and was going to leave my husband for him, and I ruined his Christmas spirit. <laughs> oh no! Not his Christmas spirit, LP! <laughs> uh, oh, so now I'm the bad guy. I lost most of my work friends and no longer get invited to outings. Only a handful of people at work are seeing this for what it is. Most people feel sorry for him and think I'm a horrible person. Some are even super shitty to me at work now behind this whole thing. And my position requires me to be in contact for the entire shift with most of the other employees in order to keep notes and data about how each area is running. Some people just flat out ignore me, making my job a lot harder than it has to be. Well, this sounds like something that should be brought up with HR. He has a record. We could pull in another eyewitness on what he does and how he is. I don't know if that's enough to convict. Maybe there's some weird text messages. I don't know. Grin and Barrett seems like a, a sort of poor choice here. He's controlling the whole narrative. Can't let that happen. You better fling some mud right back at him. <laughs> some people will talk shit to me. And the whole experience kind of messed me up for a little bit. I was heartbroken, in a way. I really considered this guy to be like family. Not only did I lose what I thought to be a good friend, but now I'm public enemy number one at work because almost everyone believes his sob story. I became very depressed. I had kind of let myself go. I stopped being friendly to the men at work. I didn't want anyone finding me attractive, and I didn't want any men to get the wrong idea about me. I had it in my head that I was absolutely not going through that drama again. Over time, eventually, I've gotten back to normal. Yeah, that sounds like something you need to talk through with the therapist, you know? It is like a, a huge betrayal, but just know that it was him misreading the signs and twisting it all out of perspective. The only thing that OP even really conceivably did wrong is, is talk about relationships and whatnot. Which even calling it wrong is a stretch. A bit uncouth, I might say. But different work environments have different, I don't know, company cultures or whatever. Anyway, OP concludes with, uh, N still makes attempts to talk to me. Ew. Will text me occasionally or will try to approach me at work. I flat out stonewall him. 
There you go. Of course, when that happens, I get told to stop being so mean to N. He's such a nice guy and he cares about you so much. Yeah, a little too much if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> OP says, I really no longer care what anyone thinks. Dude, that's the most freeing thing of all, isn't it? It's <laughs> just like, yeah, whatever. Feel how you feel, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> if they think that I'm a bitch to poor little N, oh well. If I have to be one to get all the information I need to do my job, then I will. Switching buildings is an option, but there's a huge part of me that doesn't want to give this little shit the satisfaction of feeling like he's won, like he did with the last woman. I want to be here for whenever another woman invariably ends up in my spot. I want to be here when people see him for who he truly is. Oh, beautifully ended. It's only a matter of time, OP, I guarantee you that. We got two! That means hopefully there doesn't need to be a third, but the way this is going, the way the whole office is protecting him, probably because he's younger than them, they're like, oh, he's just a little, he's a little baby boy. He's a 20 year old man. He needs to be treated like one. Get your shit together, son. Swift kick in the dick. <laughs> That's how we do it. This kid needed to be bullied a lot harder. This kid needed to have some repercussions brought upon him. Unfortunately, I don't partake in the social stew, foul soup that that is. <laughs> or at least I partake as little as possible. And it's largely because of situations like this. You, you truly don't know what anybody else is thinking. But you kept your head on the swivel, you, you dealt with it as best you could. I still think HR needs to get involved. But I like the fact that you're sticking to your guns. You're like, I'm not running out of here tail between the legs. Everybody can hate me and I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Uh, it's like serious chat energy. I love that, dude. I checked the profile for an update. There's not one, so I'm gonna assume that maybe N went the way of the dinosaur or just isn't as big a problem as he used to be. Or maybe OP doesn't feel like writing about his bullshit. Either way, <laughs> good episode. Good stories, especially at the end there. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Check out the Patreon, the YouTube memberships if you would. There's some free episodes up on the Patreon that you might not have seen yet. And uh, we try to do that whenever possible. If you can't afford to do it though, that's cool. I appreciate you watching the whole things. I mean, you made it this far, so so big kudos. Always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, you definitely, definitely deserve it, and I shall see you in the next one. So until then, bye bye. -bye.